call meeting to order. Uh, the first order of business is <laughs> approve the April minutes, not March, since March wasn't even in then. So any discussion of the April minutes? Yeah. Anybody want to make a motion? Make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll second. second. Okay. Third. All in favor? Aye. Be too distracting if I just listen and hook this up. Well, yeah, that work. Go ahead. So, um, at our last meeting, somebody during well, I think was Peter, who yeah, asked, I don't, yeah. I don't Mike, it's on the wall. Turn it on. Was it Michael about the shredded paper? No, it was Peter. Okay. Anyway, whoever it was, so <coughs> I looked into it, and uh, so. What I was told, I, I talked to Kevin, the manager at Pro Shred. I talked to Solid Waste Solutions, our transfer station, and Valley Recycling. So the deal is, we really should not ever put, like for home shredders, don't put it in your curbside. You, that's the, the no-no. If it, You can't just throw it in your curbside bin, because like, people who are in single stream, it's going to the MRF, and it, get, it does get all sort. It's not safe for one thing, but it gets all caught in the machine, so that's not the way to dispose of it. It can be taken to the transfer station as long as it's in a bag and put in with the cardboard, and then they take it to a paper recycling facility. What did she say? Sunoco in Holyoke, I think. So what happened with your day, with your shredding day? How did that waste get handled? Well, Pro Shred, and I assume any other reputable shredding company like that. So there's, a, it's pretty cool. It, inside the truck is some big box, and so the machine it lifts up the dumps, the can that all the papers in, and puts it into the shredder, and and, and automatically goes into that box. And I believe what Kevin told me is that box stays locked until it's emptied at the paper recycling facility and they use what's it called? Rand Whitney in Worcester. Um, Valley Recycling will take shredded paper but they want it bagged. I said, well what do you do with it? She goes, just throw it in with the paper. Or just throw it in the I mean, it's like young people that answer the phone there, so it's hard to get. Anyway, they want it bagged, which makes sense, so then it doesn't get caught up in any machinery. I don't know if I'd want to take my shredded paper to Valley Recycling, but anyway, they, they do accept it, and she says, you know, it goes to the recycling place. I don't think I she have a really knew. Question just in terms of the climate committee and shredding is there really isn't any ecological benefit to shredding versus just recycling. No, it's for your own security purposes. Like. Yeah, if you're paranoid. <laughs> oh, I'm not throwing my <laughs> bank statements in the paper recycling. Are you kidding me? I don't, well, I don't see anybody climbing in that. I go to that dump once a week and everything gets compact. It just, it seems like a lot of energy. It but just that like, isn't, I don't go to the dump. I have like whatever, a dumpster in my parking oh my. lot. Okay. No, that's, Anyway, mixed, just my two cents. Recycling. My two cents. It just doesn't I seem like. I be climate. Uh -uh. Doesn't no, seem like I an ecological. My stuff shredded, but I like the cool thing about shred uh, pro shred is they have multiple services. Like I think they come to town hall once a week. They are some shredding company. That's what Carolyn told me. So the town has their stuff sh shredded and picked up by somebody. Also, you can go to Pro Shred with your stuff and they'll shred it for you. I mean, for B, but anyway, that, there was, a, I, I feel like the article that he read made it seem like no shredding was safe. That's not true. There is plenty of shredding that's safe, but not to throw it in your recycling bin. That is not safe, and it's not good for the and sorter. Okay. For those of us who are concerned about it, 
Okay. That's fine. Right. Sorry. I just had to say that because I feel like the shredding industry has like created all this fear and, and th that that is a little bit uh, misplaced. But that's well, just. I'm, you know, I'm glad you're not. But you know, I know plenty of people that are concerned, and I I'm just concerned that they're concerned, and I'm going to shut up now. So what do you do with you just throw stuff in the paper recycling? That's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, good for you. You got to remember if you you're, if you get ripped off, if your bank, if your account gets ripped off, you are completely not liable. That is the bank's job to guard your money. And if they screw it up, it's the bank who's going to pay for it. After that, I don't worry. That's true. And Florence Bank is very on the ball. I mean, whenever my account has been hacked, they are the ones that let me know. So and it's never been for much. It's like a gas station. Anyway. So, okay, that's it on shredded paper. Next is cleanup day. So let me bring everybody up to date on what happened with cleanup day. So we did it on April 20th, and we met at 8.30 at Hopkins. So that's the change. So we moved from Home Depot to Hopkins, and that was a, a real success, moving it to the center of town. I want to thank Solid Waste because the folks there were wonderful to work with. And for everyone who brought in waste and said that they were doing the cleanup day, they were able to dump it there for free. I also want to thank Tandem. They donated three dozen bagels. Um, Hadley Police, Hadley Fire, and the DPW were all notified, so they were all there. Um, they knew this information ahead of time. Um, the day started rainy but then cleared up. We ended up having more than 40 people clean up around town. And one thing that was really significant is this year there were probably 20, I can break down the Google form, but probably 20 students who did it. Um, some of them I think were pro Merido and there were some other clubs and some of the teachers, Chris Markowski and a few other people. Um, who were there to meet the kids that morning. So I don't think we've ever had a bigger turnout of yeah, teens. It was pretty and amazing. thank you for coming, Michael. Oh, it's amazing how many students were there and it's really a nice thing. You did a great job. Yeah. Uh, one follow-up from that is Sadie Sear, student at Hopkins, uh, actually sent us a survey. She was just curious about some of our opinions on things. I think she was really taken aback by how much trash she found on the rail trail. That's what she said. And she worked with a few others. There were The kids mostly worked on the rail trail, which was actually a safer place to go. Um, so if you happen to see that, just respond to what mm -hmm. she was looking for. I, so this was the fourth time that we've done it. And we've had some success. I mean, we had over 50 bags of trash um, brought to the transfer station from people who were collecting through it. I guess I wonder sometimes, how can we, how can we change this? How can we change the rhythm? Because of people littering? Yeah, because this shouldn't be coming, you know, year after year after year. It's just not sustainable. Maybe. Really. Maybe we had more of those cool student-made signs. Well, no. so I don't understand the mentality of, of people that throw trash out the window. Like, what? what? You know, like, it's, in, it's interesting you say that because when you're looking at what we... I mean, I guess I do, but it's so like... Of what we filled up the bags with, it was a lot of... There were a lot of beer cans. There were a lot of Dunkin', um, the little plastic containers. There were a lot of things like from fast foods that just people eat up and then toss to the side. That's what we were finding. Um, and it just, it would be good. I don't know how you, well I brought this up before, maybe the threat of fines. But maybe, that, you know, that maybe but you up. know, I don't know if that's something that the police want to bother with. Well I'm just with. saying, that you can't just put up a sign saying, you know, $500 fine for littering. I mean, I think we'd have to have a a regulate it would have to be a bylaw you know it's a pretty big deal 
There is a bylaw, but you have to catch somebody doing it. You can't just say, here's trash on the ground, and I think Jane threw it. Oh, no, you have to catch them. Right, exactly, and that's really hard. Right. Yeah. Well, it's also disappointing that a couple weeks later, you know, Claire and I did the stretch along um, the UMass Hadley Farm. Um, and we got bags and bags of trash from there. But, you know, a few weeks later and there's cans and other things popping up oh, all over. Oh, you know, again. when you turn the corner off Route 9 onto Maple, you know, where the entrance exit to McDonald's yeah. is, it's, it's all trash. So, up so one thing I have noticed, if I may, is that it used to be the fast food places had a place you could throw your trash as you went out. My last meal, I've eaten it sitting here waiting because I'm going back. They don't have those anymore. None of them have drive-by trash dispensers. And maybe the committee should encourage them to reinstate that. Well, would it, do we have the authority to go? Encourage them. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, what about no, the health, is that, can that fall under like the health department or something? Is no, that an enforcement? No, it's, 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 this is the place it is. But, you know, figure out, maybe just writing them a nice letter saying, we do this cleanup, we're finding all of your stuff, we noticed there, you used to do this, and now you don't, is there a reason why you stopped doing it? So how would that work, since, as you exit, so then you would have a trash can on the right? Yeah. And so people would lean across their car? No, be on the driver's side, I'm sorry, on the left. Right by the window, right after you, Order your stuff at the window, not at the window, at the, at the Building. podium. The podium. Yeah. Before you drive up to pay for it, there was a trash bucket. So you could throw away the last. Oh, oh, yeah. I see what you mean. But now there's oh. no place to do that. If there was a place for people to do it, then it might happen. Then the issue is well, that's extra money because somebody has to pay. Oh, they're going to put drugs in it. They're going to put illegal things what? in it. What? Wait, somebody else. This is this. I can just see these are going to be the responses. We don't want responsibility for somebody can drive up and put something in that trash bucket that isn't our trash. It's their household stuff that's illicit or whatever. So, this is something that we could work on next month. We could compose the letter and send it to yeah. some of the fast food places. Okay. Or just go and talk to the manager first and see what they say. Yeah. You know, they may have a, an ultimatum from corporate that says, thou shalt not. Well, on that same line, there was um, a fair amount of waste from Home Depot, including some broken carts next to Wendy's. What kind of trash? Mm -hmm. There were broken shopping carts from Home Depot that were over in the lot right next to Wendy's. Um, yeah. And we were able to drag them back to them. And they certainly took them. And they'll see if they can save some of them or see if some of them just end up getting getting broken up and tossed. So what was the percentage of it being nips? Oh, we don't have those kind of numbers. We don't. I, I mean, mean that you cleaned up, were you? No. Not we didn't. Many. We had a few dozen fireball nips and some other nips, but it's not anything we ever track. I mean, we were lucky enough to get the fellow who was working at the transfer station to be recording how many bags we brought in. And middle of the afternoon, he had said we were at the fifty bag mark. So, what do you? What would you say most of the trash that you guys cleaned up was comprised? There was a lot of plastic trash, and it was a lot of um, empty bottles and um, like water beer bottles. cans. No, no juice thing. Beer cans, other things. Yeah, I would. I would just like to make a suggestion for next year that um, we try to help guide people to separate all their so that the, we're not throwing away aluminum and glass and into the waste stream basically when, when we do this well what we did is we actually had bags for recyclables okay, great and we also had bags for trash great. so we were able to do the cans great. and all of that great. yeah so you know another successful year but again it yeah, feels like um, it just feels kind of like sisyphus you know you're climbing up the hill and you always mm -hmm. keep sliding down and it's too bad that we can't change our rhythm.
I think you should think about it as a really nice community building event that brings people together and um, gets you outside and, and, That's true. and then try to do some of these other things. But I, I wouldn't feel like Sisyphus. Okay. Right. Okay. I mean, I know the river people already have a cleanup they've been doing for years. Yeah. Yep. Um, Every other town's doing it. I, I wonder if somehow um, we should be in communication so they can say, oh, and the town of Hadley's doing their cleanup on such and such a day, and we're doing ours on this day. Well, we were in contact with the Connecticut okay. River yeah. Conservancy, yeah. so they knew the day we were doing the cleanup. Okay. I do wonder about DCR, because isn't DCR ultimately responsible for the rail trail? Yeah, and were you going to look into that? that? Do you know of anybody we can talk to over at DCR? No, but I can find out. Okay, thanks. And that's the report on cleanup day. Okay. So number three is green communities. Do you want to do uh, that? Drainage ditches? Drainage ditches. Oh, drainage ditches, yeah. sorry. Okay, wait a minute. I have the that. I'm sorry, I'm out of it. What was the last well, thing? Well, so what's you were going to yeah, have so what's, what we're going to do is we are going to oh, no, get together with Scott McCarthy right, and, and with Carolyn. Through, so, around. you know, it was really interesting because through the, um, the town committee, we actually got a report about drainage ditches. Um, Christopher Okafor had put in for a grant back in 2019, well that's the year that they were awarded the grant, and they cleaned out four large ditches. They were the beside the main road yeah. type. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now we need to look at taking this further. That was something that certainly came up at the Farmer's Day, that was a big issue. And so um, Scott and Carolyn. Yeah. Um, said that they would ride with us in June and take a look and see if they we'll can show extend that. Yeah. So now I remember. So that uh, bit that I... So at the farmer's round tra table, somebody said something about ditches. Ditches that were made before 1985 weren't subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. So mm -hmm. I repeated that last meeting, which I probably shouldn't have done because I have since looked for something in writing that says that, and I haven't been able to find it, and I got in touch with them. That's pretty much accepted wisdom, that any, any of these old ag ditches are, are not considered wetlands, and you can, you, can, you can dig them out. The problem is that Ed Matusko brought up at the farmer climate meeting mm -hmm. is, is that you have to get onto pe private individuals' own portions of the ditch. Right. So if they are downstream from you and their ditch is, is, a, clogged is up. a dam, then you're you're kind of out of luck. Well, there I didn't bring it with me, but the town has a bylaw about that, which well, it doesn't say you have to keep your ditch cleaned out. It says it's against the law to put junk in it. So, but Scott's been really busy. Neither Jack or I have had time to talk with him about how that ever gets enforced. Well, some of it's junk going in, but some of it is just regular old silt that just accumulates over time. And it's right. not and somebody the necessarily the putting in trash. It doesn't address that. Yeah. It just says, you know, you can't use it for your compost or your yard waste or whatever. I think there's going to be some efforts in town to try to address this. I mean, um, perhaps as a committee we could assist in some of the dialogue between some of the farmers who are having trouble talking to their neighbors. Maybe we could jointly write a letter between the Ag Committee well, that's and why the Climate Committee and, and the farmers in question and just ask a neighbor in a neighborly way, can we have access, can the farmer have access so that he can clean it out? I, I, I think that we could probably get a lot like done. It seems like that would work, but I guess in some cases some people just say, no, I don't want you on my property. But um, I'm just wondering if, I don't know, maybe we need a new bylaw or something that, it, if 
if ditches on you know regular residential lots that people don't want to let anybody in there to clean that are clogged up are, are blocking the dam causing farms to flood like if it's a continuous network and some of them are clogged up and the person's just being uncooperative or doesn't want to spend the money or whatever well, those drainage ditches drain the entire town, not just farmland. That's what so I mean. It so affects everyone. That's right. So it just seems like maybe we need a bylaw about access or something. So in 2019, when they got the grant, they, they tried to contact every person who had land that was needed to, they needed to access to reach the ditch to clean it because there's a liability issue if you take your big equipment across my lawn and you wreck it Tear and you're going to fix it. But the homeowner doesn't necessarily want that. And so if they didn't get permission, that's, that's it. Well, They're dead in the water. In the report that Scott shared with us, they probably had a hundred names listed. And it seemed like they contacted many of them. All four of those large areas around town, they were able to dig out quite yes. a few of the ditches. Yes. Remember, there's no grand plan in Hadley. It's not necessarily engineered that everything's going to flow smoothly. Um, it's sort of cobbled together. In, Except in when it was places. designed, because the early settlers were clever, perhaps cleverer than we were are, they did drain. And that, they that's well. what my impression that if they were all cleared out but the a lot of this flooding problem right problems but we now they're new issues we because do. when you have new housing developments or when you as you say have a neighbor who doesn't throw trash in it but they put their lawn clippings there or they put their leaves there it's it builds up and it's even it's if they do room. nothing it builds up oh, yeah. right well and stuff starts growing in there like I read an art I, I maybe it was an editorial piece or something but um a, a person that lives in Sunderland was saying, I don't know what to do. I, you know, it's a regular residence, you know, not, not on farmland. But she said, you know, there's a ditch behind my house. But her understanding was because of wetland protection laws. She said, there's a tree growing in it now. And I don't, Why I don't think I'm not allowed to. Why don't you to come and talk to you? Hmm? That, yeah. Should we? Hmm. Well, you're saying... That isn't the problem in town. Well, part of it is, if if there's if there's a salamander or a plant that is sacred, then she will be able to respond to that and say these are, you know, farmland is exempt or not, and where does farmland start and end? Because it may be a farmer's field, but it drains this way. And yeah, but we're saying the drainage ditches are need to. For right. all flooding situations. But it may help us get a farm. better understanding of what the issues have been that we need to look at. Well, I was saying she lives in Sunderland. I'm not saying we have that issue in town. There is a do, perception right? in Hadley among some that they are not allowed to touch their ditch because of wetland protection. It is not the case for a huge percentage the vast majority of the ditches because they were built pre-1985 and are exempt from wetland preservation. And if you are doing them in order to farm, you can't drain, you go dig out a ditch to put a subdivision in. But if you were draining them in order to farm, you are allowed to do whatever you want to that ditch, providing the owner of the ditch will allow you to do that. Yeah, but if, I mean, I, re I watched that film about the Wetlands Protection Act and the, the man, you know, narrating it, it's very specific. For agricultural use means irrigation or animals are drinking from it, but it doesn't say anything about drainage. But we should be allowed to have ditches specifically for drainage. There, this is, it, there, there are specific regs that exclude agriculture and allow you to maintain the ditch. Okay. And that's been the case for a long time. There is a further confusion in Hadley about this issue because the town of Hadley in the recent history went out and managed a ditch for the purpose of not agriculture. They were out there to building the ditch and drainage. getting, they right. didn't do it as a farm. 
And so somebody came in from DEP and started to find them and it freaked them out, the town out. But again, if you are a farmer and you want to clean out a ditch, you can clean out a ditch. Right, what I'm, I got that part. It's the non-farm land where there are drainage ditches that have not been cleaned out that I'm wondering about. That is correct. And that it's is, clogging that, up that the is, system. That is the question. Jane, does the town own the ditches? Sometimes. Oh, not always. Not always. Okay. So the, for it, the thing Michael was talking about up on Wampanoag and um, Algonquin, yeah. Yeah. there's a ditch that was collapsing and the homeowner said to the town, I'm riding on my land and your drainage pipe, which goes under the road, is causing my land to erode and I'm gonna fall into the ditch when I'm on my grass. And talked to conservation, they thought it was okay. We went ahead and did it and then DEP So repaired the in, culvert and everything? Repaired the culvert and then DEP came in and said, no, no, you can't do that. Because now. of wetlands? You can't do it. I know, I'm you can't. Was not involved, but they slapped us with a big fine. So they, who knows they the detail? They didn't, on that. they didn't actually find you, did they? They did. Yeah, like ten thousand dollars or something. Yeah, right? tax dollars. It could have gone somewhere much more useful. So who knows the detail on that conservation? Yeah. So conservation would be a good group to mm -hmm. get in. Okay. Yeah. So you have two two different parts of conservation. You have the committee and then you have the agent who's in town hall. Who would be better, the agent? Well, the agent has the, I think you need one of each. I need the agent plus somebody from the committee. Do you know some of the members of the CONCOM committee? Uh, well, is it Steve? Gary Pellissier, okay. Gordon Smith, uh, Ray um, Michkowski. Who else is on that committee? Steve. Steve. Stevie Singowitz. Yeah. And there's somebody else. <coughs> um, Brendan. He came on after I was. Uh, Brendan. On to that okay. And what's the name of the agent now? Yeah, I knew you were going to ask me. Well, that. we can um, just go to. Um, she's upstairs at the top of the stairs on the right. Easy enough. We can just go to their yeah. web page. It's right before Carolyn's. Yeah, and we can see if they can join us next month. Okay, who wants so, to do that? Um, I can do that. And, you know, it could be as easy as getting Steve, Stevie, mm -hmm. over. Okay. Okay. So I can be on that. Next month is my meeting anyways. So that'll be good. But um, it's really important. I was um, more than a little surprised that that was really the number one thing to come out of that mm -hmm. meeting with the farmers. Yeah, it was. It took up a lot of air time. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, because it is complex. And yeah, but it's so. I mean, it just seems really important. Okay. You ready for three point four? I'm sure. Am I going to do that? No, nope, I got that. Okay. So uh, we contacted um, Chris Desjardins. Who is the business manager for the Hopkins for the Hadley schools and he had somebody in to offer a bid for weatherization and insulation at Hadley Elementary School but he hasn't gotten any formal bids as of yet but we hope before next month that we would have these formal bids remember now we started this process last year last summer it's now a year later and we're hoping that this is something that can move forward as soon as he gets the bids. And this is something that the money from the green communities can go toward paying. I mean, in all fairness, though, the, uh, there was a long holdup because of the whole question of whether we're going to use that money to replace the air conditioning in sure. town hall, waiting for um, Gary to get those bids. And so finally, that was taken off the table. So. It's not like we've been waiting for the school to do this for the entire year, but it has been a couple of months. It's been a while, and it's really important to move on with this. Yeah. And Chris Mason, our agent from Mass DOER, is also asking questions, so he's involved. So it's likely that um, once they come back with the bids, that well, he said he'd kind of look into yeah, it. Yeah. Right? That it's likely that it's a go. 
Okay, so number five here under updates is the MMA webinars and climate action plans. And I've gone back and forth whether to bring that up this time or not because Marion's not here, but it's on the agenda, so I'll just say this. I went to the th uh, three webinars. I think that's it. I don't think there are any more. And um, the first one was supposed to be about why towns need a climate action plan. And uh, Melissa Hoffer, the you know the governor's climate lady, was there, and she really talked that much about why. I mean, I, I, she talked like everybody already knows. The, the, the state has determined that in order to keep from overheating the planet, we need to, as a state, get to 85% of being <coughs> net zero energy by 2050. Well, in some sectors. In some areas, we do need to be net zero. So how are you going to do that? That's what a climate action plan is about. So the second one was supposed to be how to do it. <laughs> well, there wasn't anybody there like um, who gave, I was hoping for a template or something like this is what the type of thing that needs to be included in a climate action plan and here's how you go about developing one. Yeah. There were two towns represented, uh, Salem and Beverly, who actually did their climate because they're right on the coast right next to each other, they have a lot in common. So they did one together, and they got into the detail of what all is in their climate action plan. So some of it was like, okay, cool. But, you know, they didn't say step one, do this, step two, do that. You know, it wasn't anything like that. And their recommendation, you know, somebody from MMA was there running the webinar and, you know, kind of had prompting questions. and. And her question, main question was, well, what would you recommend to other towns? How, how would they go about getting started? And they said, just look at what other people have done. You know, look at different ones and you'll get the drift of how to do it. So that's why I listed, these are the cities near us who have a climate action plan. Uh, I was wrong. Sunderland, Deerfield, Hatfield, they all have um, hazard mitigation plans, like that they got an MVP, which are fine, but that's not a climate action plan. So these are the cities, uh, Beverly and Salem were represented in one webinar, and then Weston and New Bedford were in the, the third webinar, which was about um, community outreach. And, um, which they're doing, they have all these initiatives, they, you know, it's like Electrify Weston and, you know, all this cool stuff and they have a great web page, you know, kind of like what Amherst has done that, and it lists like all the incentives available to residents and all, all this stuff. And um, the, you know, the moderator, whatever you want to call it, the lady from MMA that was running the webinar, she said, well, um, now the people that were, in these webinars that represented Beverly, Salem, Weston, and New Bedford were all their sustainability coordinators, full-time, you know, paid people. And she said, you know, what would you suggest to smaller towns that don't have a sustainability coordinator? How, how would they go about doing all this outreach? And they both just said, I really don't see how that could happen. Like you kind of really need a planning coordinator or some, you need somebody because it's a lot it's way more than anything I mean and we will not be able to from what I've looked at but I'm not going to expound on climate action plans I listed these ones here you pointed out to me that the link for Worcester is wrong so I'll have to change that so I just figured I guess you know we should each pick a town yeah. and yeah. I'm happy to take a look at East Hampton. I'm wondering, do you know, does East Hampton have a sustainability person? Yep. Somebody in charge? Yep. So basically all these towns have people in charge of Right, so we can just look and start talking about what it looks like, what does it take to put together a climate action plan. And then, you know, at our next meeting we can talk about it. I mean, obviously it's going to take a few conversations probably. Hopefully, Marion will be here yeah. next time so she can get in. You know, I wonder if Granby 
or Sunderland or Deerfield or any of the I other don't. neighboring towns would ever want to join in with Hadley, kind of like Beverly and Salem did? Well, here, my advice is before we get to that place, pick an action plan, climate action plan, pick a town, and really dig into it. But I think once you see the kind of detail, it's very, each one is, from what I've seen, each one is very specific to that town. So, I could almost more see us doing it with Northampton because they're right on the river. We're right on the river. I, you know yeah, what? but just, you know, there's also we can talk about there's Hatfield as well. And, right, you know, no, there's a lot of that might, sort of sister towns to right, us. That, that, it, you know, if we have yeah. similar, and also somebody should look at the Beverly and Salem because some of it they did together, but they have lots of programs going on that are independent mm -hmm. of one another. So I don't know if they did it because of funding. Maybe it was, I, I don't know. So I'm not saying we should or shouldn't. I think first, let's just look into it and then come back and talk to each other about it. I, I think it's gonna take a while to like figure it out, figure it out. So I have been on several town meetings about the river and flooding. Mm -hmm. And those <coughs> meetings include federal- You mean in other towns? Federal, state, um, regional, and everybody in those groups agrees this is not Hadley's plan. It's not Northampton's plan. It has to be a whole Connecticut River Valley plan. Right. Because what Greenfield does affects us. What we do affects Holyoke. What Holyoke right, does but, affects But town's climate action plans aren't just about the river. Right. They, they, I agree with lots that. Lots of other things. Right. But, but that in part, terms of the river, right. that's being looked at differently. The other thing I have that I think is good news is that the governor is aware that Western Massachusetts exists and is aware that Western Massachusetts does not have the money that Eastern Massachusetts has to do all of the municipal things that are necessary for small towns especially. Right. And she is encouraging various areas to set up regional sustainability coordinators, hmm. if you will. So that, and I don't, I'm saying sustainability, I don't think that's on her list yet. Somebody should write her or write Joe Comerford and mm -hmm. say, Western Mass needs this because right. we can't do it ourselves. Right, so that's what I'm, you know, this is gonna take a while, but I think yes. none of us have a clear idea of what's even in a climate action plan right. at this point. So I, I think, you know, let's each pick a, a city that has one and, you know, read it. I mean, and they're long, they're like, 120, 150 pages long, but you at least understand the summary, you know, like, I don't know, just dig into it to the best of your but ability. But you need to and start pushing for the other, too, because that's not overnight. Yeah, 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 okay. All right, so, well, who, who, like, is the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission working on that, or what agency? I would go to the governor through the state rep and the state senator. So a regional plan up. regarding <coughs> the river? Or? No, no sustainability. You need a, a joint, like they have joint building inspectors for some of the small mm -hmm. towns. An area-wide sustainability coordinator. Okay, well a lot of the towns already, like no, all the Sunderland towns. has one. Yeah, let's go talking. a little further out in the hills and start talking. To. Okay. You know, Conway, Ashfield. Okay. So Holly. contact someone. The governor's office. <laughs> An interesting statistic, because you can't do it about what the finances in the town look like. Conway has the same average income as Wellesley. Hmm. There's one very rich person in Conway, and not many other people. So it brings it no. way up. Wow. It is crazy. So they're looking at when you look at towns needing to be graded about income, look at a bell shaped curve and cut off the ends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you get your extremes and then you, you you know, you can have your basic. But there are all kinds of things that they're 
starting to become aware of that I'm really excited about. Yeah. I mean, one of the ones, not, well, it's climate change, but not. In looking at road allocation for money, they're not looking at the number of people who drive on the roads, which is how they have always done it in the past, but how many miles of road you have. Oh, hallelujah. Exactly. They're waking up, and it's very exciting. It's slow, but it's exciting. Right. The next thing they're trying to get them to look at is the elevation of the road. Higher towns have worse problems. There's more snow. Right. There's more, more erosion. Potholes. There are more potholes. There are more. Anyway, they're looking. It's exciting. Where did you hear about all that? All these meetings. Oh, I go to. Okay. All right. All right. Read, read the uh, weekly MMA report if you have nothing else to do. Do you get that in your email? Yeah. I know. But so can I? I don't really understand how that organization works. Like, I'm not a paid town employee. Can I have them? Okay, to get that newsletter, do you have to be an MMA member? Is my I don't question. know. I'll find out. I mean, are you? Yeah. Did I'm you have on to the select board. Right. So, but I, I'm. I don't know. I'm not a paid employee, but the town may have a membership. I have no well, idea. Well, maybe your work with recycling. Yeah, that's not a paid position either. Yeah, no. but neither but, is mine. Right. Well, will you find out? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks. Or I can just send you a copy of mine. There you go. Yeah, well, that works. Okay. I mean, I don't We're really good. care. You, We're you know? So will you participate in this? Good. Find an action plan? Pick a town? Um, yes, I will. I can't do anything right now. Okay, so you'll let us know. Yeah. All right. Which town would you like? He doesn't want to say. Oh, want to I, say I can't even get okay. my head around this right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at this. Please, Kathy. Yep. Thank you. Kathy, do you want to pick or do you want to think about it? Oh, I can look at Northampton. That's fine. Okay. Well, I don't want to look at it. <laughs> I like Northamptons. Okay, so, and Kathy, Jack, okay. Before we move on to new topics, I just want to summarize. Um, Jane, maybe you can help me find who is the DCR person who's responsible for the rail trail. That'll be a real help, and I'll contact them. them and also, I will contact the CONCOM to see if we can have a joint meeting, you know, and get oh, together about the and wet talk about protection. wetlands and, and ditches, ditches and everything else. So I'll do that between okay. now and the next meeting, those two things, okay. Okay. So I think that's all for updates. New topic, Hadley Community Electricity Aggregation Program, Michael. Well, everybody got in town, I believe, got some mail in the last week. Well, unless you're already um, on it. The last time. couple unless, of unless weeks. You're already yeah. on it. Because I've been doing it for a couple yeah. of years, so I didn't get that. Okay. okay. And so you got this recently? Yes. Okay. And I just um, have a fairly good understanding of what, what some of this is and wanted to wanted to try to re-explain what is in that letter and then ask answer any questions that we might have or anybody else that might have specifically about um, how this works. So do you know, is there a committee in Hadley or who comes up with all this? All right, it comes to the select board and if you watch our last meeting, he was on at six o'clock. Who? The guy from the... Constellation. Yes. What Jack keeps wanting to know is who drummed up this idea in the first David place? David Nixon. Okay. Okay. I mean, he didn't get the no. Big I know he didn't hear about it. He <laughs> said, "Yes, this is good for Hadley." Right. Okay. That's and right. he's right. And he's right. Yeah. One of the statistics it shows in that first fifteen minutes is how their rate has remained sta mm -hmm. stable and average goes up, goes and up down. and down. But now it's way up here, and the average household in Hadley in the last year saved, I think, it was two thousand dollars because of this rate. Right. 
100%. And even if you go 100% green, which is what I did, the it's still, it's stable. Mm -hmm. and it's the concern is, and there's going to be a program here at the Senior Center, and there'll be much more information about it when it's time to renew it, which is in November, is that it's set up as an opt-out mm -hmm. program, not as an opt-in. So everyone in town is in it unless you say no. But if you want the 100% green, you have to make that effort to choose it. You have to go to the website and enroll in that. If you want to be all green, yes, but right. but you're still going to be saving. But otherwise, everybody's in for Hadley Basic at 10.47. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the current rate. It, yep. They're negotiating this week, actually, for the new rate, and they won't publish it until later because they don't want people to think that new rate's starting now. Okay, uh -huh. so you got interrupted, I think. Were you about to say that, that, that the opt out is now being challenged or proposed to be changed or is it always going to be re require you to opt out i believe it's staying as opt out great okay i didn't hear any okay i thought, you were, that I thought you were going somewhere with that sorry people objected to that at first but they're happy they well they it's it's didn't. why this the town has been able to save so much money because yes. everybody got into it and if you have those kinds of numbers then the prices come right, down exactly um, yeah, so does anybody have any questions about this? I mean, it seems, and it's great that you're doing the Hadley Green thing. I signed up for the Hadley Green thing too. It, it does cost a little bit more, you know, full disclosure, I don't buy that much electricity because I generate most of it with the solar. Well, um, I don't use that much, but even if, well, I, I can't say even if I did. If I used a lot, I don't know that I would be so generous, yeah. but I, my right. electric bill is right. low anyway, and I right. figure I can't put solar on my apartment building, so I can at least buy 100% green electricity. If, if you can afford it, and um, it's a great thing to do because you do incentivize more solar and more wind. Well, if this and is if you correct, don't want to incentivize that, more, if, if you less if, than that, if you don't exactly like it's still less. And if if you if, if you don't want solar to happen, you can. You can opt in for the basic one and, and save money too. It's just you have these options. So to your question, um, I had a question because we produce solar yeah. um, and we have actually a thousand dollar credit at our house. We're up a thousand dollars because we're producing more electricity than what we're using and they said that it would have no impact at all switching over to this it wouldn't hurt us our credit would still remain um, and we went with a hundred percent green but honestly we haven't paid for electricity in a long long time right so in case you do then that's what you'll be and uh, kathy where are you at with that uh, are you part of this i am we had it set up with basic at the time. We're not 100% green yet. Okay. <coughs> so I, I'm wondering, like, what would be the argument on people not wanting to do this? This seems like a really good deal. Is anybody not? Did anybody opt out that wants to share that with us? No. I, I did a okay. year ago. And what quite honestly, you? I don't understand. Yeah. Do you understand any better now, or do you have specific well, I, questions? I have electrical service from um, Eversource. Yep. I had a problem with electricity um, a year ago, and the electrician said, we don't have steady electricity coming from the road to the house. Uh, he called Eversource, and they were there within 20 minutes. Okay. See, that's your can distribution, I, I though. Yeah, yeah, the um, supplier and distribution. So thing. when you get your electric bill, yes, you pay for basically two different things. One is the actual electricity. And, and called and generation. And yes. the other is the distribution charges. Yeah. And that the distribution pays for the electric lines and the poles and the trenching and the maintenance and that. And Eversource you still pay. Still is your distribution You still have company. you still have Eversource to manage your distribution. What this does is allows a different company that's more competitive that 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 knows how to get a better price than Eversource does 
to sell you your electricity. So you've got this other company somewhere else that's got some generators that are cheaper than Eversource and they're putting electrons into the grid and somehow they're not those aren't actually getting to you but they are because they're going on the grid and you're pulling stuff off the grid and so you're getting supplied for your electricity by this other company. If you look on your electric bill there will be one section that says generation and one that says distribution. Right. So right now both of yours are going to say Eversource. Yes. So if you switch to this or some other mm -hmm. supplier which I wouldn't recommend but anyway it'll say constellation it'll say constellation as the generator instead of eversource because constellation is who this organization hired to be but you're right it's very confusing mm -hmm. yeah well it's it's kind of simple once you realize it's just it's just the supplier that you're changing and in massachusetts we have that option we can choose whoever we want and there are lots of companies out there that offer you a Visa card or something else that if they don't tell you what their rates are going to be and how long they're going to hold them, then you want to be suspicious. <laughs> but so when you sign up with this one, if you you're opt out of that, that, that is to say, they guarantee this rate. There, Either two or three years depending on how the negotiation mm -hmm. goes. There is a huge amount of fraud out there right. yes. that where there are companies that are convincing people to switch to them. And they're they're showing them numbers that that are that are artificially low at a given point in time when the grid is higher, and then boom, you get you, you all of a sudden you, you buy that electricity and then the grid comes way way down and you're paying more. So this is a reputable company that this town that, that the town has researched and it's obvious that they way out per performed air source. So are there 351 different services all across the state, different towns finding different aggregators? Some towns aren't finding aggregators at all. Hmm. So they're a just going with market are, rate? They're just going with the market rate. Okay. And some towns that are hopefully proactive for their residents have done what David Nixon did and got us involved. Pelham, Northampton and Amherst are going in on it together. Hmm. They've been working on that for several years, and it's finally, I guess, about to happen. And Holyoke has its own power source, so. Right. And South Hadley as well. Yeah. Right. So everybody plays it slightly different. But instead but of, of paying 15 cents per kilowatt, you can come in at either 10.4, or you could 14. come in 14. Right. Okay. And that's a guaranteed rate. As it's sort right. of like when you prepay your oil bill, if you had oil, that's going to be your rate. And it may be higher or lower in the market, but you've guaranteed that by prepaying it. Right. So when you sign in for this, you've guaranteed it for, as I say, the negotiation period is two or three years. We're currently on a three-year contract. Before that, it was a two-year contract. Before that, it was a two-year contract. Well, first one was three years. we had just gotten our bill from Eversource, and you can see the little histogram mm -hmm. showing the adjustments to the rates mm -hmm. throughout the course of the year. Yeah. yeah, so if you're not making your own electricity with solar, and you're buying it from Eversource, you could get hit with really high bills. Has that happened to any of you guys? Where it's fluctuated? Well, mm -hmm. you're the only one using well, it. It's common to see where you're they compare last year's usage, say for the month of March, versus this year's usage for the month of March. And they'll say your usage is down 20%, but your bill is up 10%. Right. And it's part common. of your bill is distribution, and part of it is generation. Mm -hmm. And they put that in because enough people were getting solar collectors that they weren't making any money. So they ch it used to all just be one fee. Yeah, Mint's been separated for quite a while. For quite a while, but that's when solar started picking up. I think right. they did it when they uh, deregulated. Right, the and said industry. you could choose your own. And to allow you people want. to choose. To, mm -hmm. The theory being that if people can choose, then there'll be competition, because instead of just having every source be the only person you can buy it from, if you have these other companies, then there'll be competition if it's deregulated, and some prices will come down, and that's kind of what, what's happened. So anyway, that's the advantage of the, the community aggregation. 
we're going to have a program here in October so that people can understand it better and have question and answer period. So is somebody from Constellation coming? Yeah, the guy who came to the select board. Hmm. Cool. Whose name I have. Okay. Where is Constellation based out of? I have his card on my desk. And I wouldn't feel bad if I, I didn't understand it either to like beat my head over if ten times to, to try to understand it. It's not doesn't make sense and we're not exposed to it a lot. Um, and that's why they did this automatic opt-in, <laughs> so that people would just do it. Right, you know, right. trust us, it's a good yeah. thing, just go but, but all your power goes through ISO New England anyways. Right. But that power got, got put into ISO by somebody. Yes. Right. So. Sure. Okay, so are we good? Anybody yeah. else? Uh, I do have one item not anticipated at the time of okay. posting. So, um, Joe Comerford sent an email saying that First Light, oh, that yeah. company that has the Northfield Mountain and they have the Turner's Dam and maybe some other sites, they're actually based in Tennessee, but um, it's open for comment. So I know it's come up about controlling the dams and controlling the water flow and all of that. So if you look on Joe Comerford's website or wherever else, you can actually find, I think it's open until the end of the month for any public comments. Yeah, I mean, I think as a committee, we should be... Um, we can't, we can't write a letter or anything as a committee unless it's, we have to go before the select board and get approval to do that. Okay, well, I would, I would hope that the select board would um, understand that Northfield Mount Hermon, while there are some environmentalists that are making a big stink about it, it is the cleanest battery that the grid currently has access to. And it is facilitating peak production. Yeah, but what, and, and as alternative as as solar and and wind becomes more and more part of the grid, things like Mount Hermon are going to become more and more essential, and it's way less problematic than lithium batteries, which some people have brought up that there are you know there are some. Yeah, there, I hear that. And I am. I am. I was until like a year ago when I started hearing environmentalist side of what's happening to the fish in the river totally in favor of that because when I moved here I was working in heating and air conditioning and I got a tour of Northfield Mountain which was amazing and yeah but look at how they get that water there yeah they, if you make electricity and you don't have batteries it's gone so if they have extra electricity they pump it up to the top of the hill where they dug out a crater when they need more electricity because it's really hot or really cold they turn the turbines around and it generates electricity. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. It looks, it performs better than it did on paper when they were anticipating it. It's also hydraulic water batteries are, it, 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 cons it, you think that they're inefficient, right? You think they're taking a motor, they're pumping all this water up the hill, and then they're only getting like 85% of that electricity back when it goes down the hill. Turns out, that all the lithium batteries, all the lead acid batteries, every other type of battery technology we have is less than, than the 85% oh, yeah. of the oh, water it's, is. Like I say, so it's, it's, in reality, it's much better than it looked on paper right. when they designed and it. It's also true that it probably does kill some fish because, you know, it's it, sucking them it's up. It's sucking them up. Time. And it's also true that people should be making a little bit of a stink so that in this FERC relicensing process, the utilities are required to do the best job they can and put a, a screen on there to try to reduce the amount of fish and do things to mitigate it. But there's really, this is a clean battery source. We, the grid desperately needs it if we're going to do more solar and wind. And okay. yes, well, it, yes, it's yeah. not perfect. And guess what, nothing is. And this is the opportunity to get your voice yeah. heard. Yeah. Whatever your opinion is, yeah. this is your chance to speak up. 
uh, and to be part of that right. conversation well, you, because you said that to everybody, didn't you? yeah I did but I know it was really emphasized even at the farmer climate change meetup that we had um, other people were really raising that point of In now favor now is the time to speak up well I think they were really arguing the point of water control on the river oh, the of dam who control. has the control of the dams and right. things like that that's where people were saying you have to raise your voice this is so that's a different issue, though, controlling the dams having to do with floods rather than to make money. But first, uh, first flight... They control all the dams? They don't control all the dams, but they, they control... They don't control any of the dams, they control the water flow. Mm -hmm. okay. The water is there, and if they suck it up, then the river goes down. Right. And when they release it, the river goes up. You can see it. You drive over the bridge, and sometimes it's high, and sometimes it's low, and it hasn't rained for months. Yeah, that's, the, that's what's going on. So is it conceivable that they would cut loose the water if we needed electricity? And we were flooding, they would turn the water loose, yes. Unless, <laughs> unless the regulations get written right. mm -hmm. that that be a condition. And that's why you need your voice right. heard. Michael? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that there are several dams on the Deerfield River and the Connecticut River that are hydroelectric dam dams. There are also several tributary dams that are simply flood control dams, mm -hmm. where when we get 10 inches of rain in Vermont, they have these giant empty lakes with dams in front of them. Most of them are earthen dams and they just fill up and there's dozens of them. And then as the storm hits, this one lets go, and then another one lets go, and uh -huh. another one lets go to try and, you know, you, you will regular. notice that the river does go up and down, but when there's a flood, they are pretty good at keeping it right at a certain yes. level, yeah. unless it's the big so one. The, so there is somebody paying attention. Oh, there's a whole river Absolutely dam not. control group. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, it came up at that meeting of uh, there's... There might be a dam control group, but are they really doing their job? Do they really have the farmers in mind? And I think that was the point of some of the farmers saying, we need to speak up when there's an opportunity like this, looking for public comment. Okay. So that's where that was Got coming it. from. It, the, the difficult part is that if there are 10 inches of rain, not much is going to well, that's it's not raining. Much not, it's not, much, not much. Not much. Yeah. Once the da all the dams are full, right? You can't hold any more water back, right? And it all yeah. goes over the dam, yeah. and it comes down here and it floods fields and. That's well, and it's raining on your field anyway, having nothing to do with dams. I mean, right. When the water rain. level comes up mm -hmm. on low lying farmland, it's a huge problem if that happens during the season. It's what happened last year. Yeah. It messed up a lot of farms, in a big way because um, it was like a spring melt type mm -hmm. volume of water in the middle of the growing season and their fields went underwater and it was very costly. Well I think that's and that's where the conversation about keeping all the ditches in Hadley cleaned out. Would but be. the water comes up the ditches just like it goes down the ditches. If the river, here's your ditch. Oh, you're saying down. if the river If flooded. the river rises, it's going to fill the ditch up to here. Yeah, and and all part the of it, Kathy, if you have 10 inches of rain fall on your field, it's just a huge volume in the first place. You know, even if you right. have options to drain or if yeah. you have light soil. But if the river's have, also flooding, then yeah. Yeah. we're going to flood. Yeah. 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 So just as an aside for my amusement, and I'm horrified by hearing this, is that there are so many environmental regulations. So if Hadley chose to, and we're talking about it, build a dam behind Bay Road, basically, to save the houses on the south end of town, um, then we have to um, provide equal storage for the water we're displacing because right. otherwise it goes off to another town. Right, we have to have And that's just such an uh, incredible yeah. concept to try and grab. You know? No, I remember and that's that. why it's all a regional thing. It's not going to be just Hadley's response to this. Right. Flooding. Everybody, you can't just build a dam all along your water because it just sends it somewhere and send else. it down river. Right. Everybody has to. So it's a, it's a long process. 
and and all the towns that were in those meetings said that's really nice we all need dams none of us can pay for them and they said there will be federal money when the time comes so that's the good news is it dike or dam dike is what you meant is it dike dike, dike. sorry wrong word Okay. Yes. Thank yeah. you. You gonna show us pictures, Michael? Hmm? You gonna show us pictures? Uh, I think we just looked at it, and I thought we covered. Okay. Yeah. The whole issue. I mean, yeah. So later on, I have some pictures that were taken by different people who had done the cleanup day that you can come up to the computer. Uh, we can do that after public comment. Okay. All right. Public comment. Fifteen minutes. Up to three minutes. Please confine your comments to <laughs> items relevant to this committee. Okay, Susan. All right, thank you. Um, I agree with Jack at looking at similar or sister lake towns, um, as he mentioned for this ad adaptation and resilience plan. Uh, I'm not certain what commonality Amherst and Northampton have to Hadley other than being abutting towns. But from what I understand, there are an abundance of people who have moved from Amherst and Northampton to Hadley for a better quality of life. And there's people who have grown up here their whole lives who have stayed here for a better quality of life. So again, I, I don't believe that an Amherst or Northampton plan um, would be met with open arms. Rather, it might be met with uh, resistance that people would not want to follow in the footsteps of Amherst or Northampton. I was trying to clear, I know where I'm not supposed to um, speak now, but just to clarify, it's not to look at the guts of the plan, like what Northampton is doing or what Amherst is doing, it's to look at whatever towns and cities in Massachusetts who have a climate action plan, mm -hmm. like what are the bones of it? What are the um, so it's using the format. plans as a model? Yeah, like it's not adapting format. Amherst plans or Northampton plans. Yeah, it's not. How did they what set it up? Doing okay. what are they looking like, at? Okay, uh, that was the advice. Look at what other towns are doing, and I feel like if we look at a bunch of other towns, even towns in the east, there will be something in common, like you know, building efficiency and what we're doing about solid waste and. It's that it's not specifically what each town is doing, but I think all town, even the state has identified these are the areas where we need to do some, something different than we're doing now because it's affecting the climate in a negative way. So you just use the operative word common to seek out those towns that have commonality with Hadley and using what they have possibly. Um, as right. a model. Yeah, it was disappointing said. that we couldn't easily grasp Deerfield's plan because they don't have a plan in place like that. Mm. You know, some of these other towns that we had hoped to turn mm. to mm. don't have things either. Mm. And they're working on that at the same time. So all we can do is look at the towns that do and try to get some idea mm. of what this needs to look like. You know, I, I think seeking commonality is important. Mm. Um, and that ties into my second point that I would have certainly looked at Amherst or Northampton from the agenda. I'd look at those, except I was working late last night and looked for the agenda at 7.30 at night and it was still not posted. No, yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. No, okay, it wasn't. So it, no, it wasn't. This agenda? Yes. I read it. No, um, I read it. It was up this morning about mid-morning. It was not Where did on... Where were you looking? I was looking at the town of Hadley website. I was able to print out the on minutes. On the calendar? Did you click? Yeah, I clicked on the calendar and Is I was it, able to I sent it Monday, I checked it on Tuesday and it was there, so I don't know. Well, I do see it says received and posted May 6th. I do see that it was printed that. Okay. But when I went to minutes and agenda and also the calendar, the minutes were there but not the agenda. Had the agenda been there, I would have looked at these links of Amherst and Northampton. So, although you may be submitting it, I don't know if it's being posted. So, you mean so on, our, on the committee web page? Or the town web page? Uh, uh, town of Hadley. 
Climate Change Committee. And then you, so you go to the ninth, and you, it says mm -hmm. Board of Health and Climate yes. Change, and you click on that, and then it says Show Agenda right there in yellow. If you click on that, that's where the agenda is. Right. They had the April agenda, um, and then when you went to Minutes and Agenda, there was only the minutes. So I would have been more. Is that is it supposed to go there every time to our to mm -hmm. our page? Mm -hmm. Like when we send it to. No, it's just it it, it on the town it's page. only going to the town page. And that's what and I was looking at, town of, because I was I able asked. to print out the minutes. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. It was I, there. I, I just a, can you can you <laughs> next time, if it's if you're not finding it, can you email us right away and we can try to. That'd break, be great. Break that would be great. Okay. Because I was working late, yeah. I wanted to yeah. look at it, yeah. and the comment I just made about Amherst and Northampton, I would have looked at those links. Yeah. Yeah. So that I was more yeah. educated okay. on my comments. So let's, yeah, if you can okay. let one of us know, and, and okay. pre preferably not right. me, because I don't usually <laughs> go online for that information. Okay, but great. Well, right, but do you have the Highly Climate Change yeah. Committee Yes. at Gmail? Yes. So if you email Highly that, I mean, I've got committee. it, so I check that every day now. Okay. We All used right. to be really, like, forget, yeah. but. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So sorry, I don't know. I don't understand that. Because I know you had checked it the other day. Right, I checked it on Tuesday and it was there. Sometimes it's hard to find stuff. Well, I mean, uh, actually, I didn't look to see if the agenda was there. I looked to see that our committee meeting was on the calendar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess if I... That is true. I just highlighted, I didn't actually... So if I clicked on it, that should have shown me the agenda? Is that the, how it works? You click on it and then it says show the agenda you have to make another step okay. it wasn't there n nor was it on the drop down menu that says minutes and agendas so and none so of us I saw it I clicked on you that I did the get the minutes I I but the agenda it, but was I so many committees that okay all right well, so next month when out. we send it to Jessica I you know I'll just check all those things I didn't really like know how to do that I mean I did check this time to make sure it got Posted on the right day, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, it was. I didn't really. It was. I've never really thought about checking to make sure the agenda is where it's supposed to be, and the correct one. Mm. Right. Okay. Okay. So we thank you. Can I ask for more comments? Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, I guess we're all done. During the meeting at eight fifteen. All right, make a motion.